Hey guys, John here with Backyard Maine. Today we're going to be installing a 30 amp backup generator connection. We'll be using a 30 amp power inlet box, a two pole 30 amp breaker, some 10-3 NMB cable, and an interlock kit. This is the easiest code compliant method for connecting a backup generator to your home. And it's also the least expensive. I prefer this method because it offers more flexibility to select the loads that you may want to run during a power outage. But we'll go over that in more detail later on in the video. So today we'll complete the entire installation, test it out, then I'll break down the material costs and go over some features to look for if you're planning on purchasing a backup generator. If you're considering installing a backup generator connection to your home and you don't have the skills or you don't feel comfortable working around electricity, especially that much electricity, there's no shame in giving your local electrician a call and having them come out and install it for you. This way you'll know it's done right and you'll know that you're going to stay safe. Okay. Let's get to it. Here we have the materials that we'll be using for the installation. I have a 30 amp exterior inlet box, a 30 amp two pole circuit breaker, an interlock kit, 15 feet of 10-3 NMB cable, and a few connectors. Interlock kits are not universal. You will need the make and model of your panel in order to purchase the correct one. I bought this one online from a company called Gen Interlock. The first step is to decide where the connection is going to be located. You want it in an area with access to your breaker panel, but also in an area where you plan to run your generator. Since I run my generator out back near my shop, I think this area is going to be best for my setup. It's less than 15 feet away from my breaker panel and within 15 feet of where I want to run my generator. My connection cord is 25 feet long, so this should work perfectly. I don't want to just connect the inlet box directly to my siding, so I picked up this mounting block. Let's get that installed first. This will give me a nice, neat, and secure mounting surface that'll look like it was installed when the home was built. You may notice that I'm installing this mounting block quite high. That's because the snow drifts very deep in this area behind my house. Next, we'll knock out a hole in the back of the inlet box. With these pre-punched knockouts, it makes it quite easy. Now, we'll mark out the hole to drill in our mounting block. I want to make sure the hole I drill is large enough to clear the connector. This spade bed I'm using may not have been the best choice. We'll drill a smaller hole just big enough for the cable through the sheathing and the sill plate and into my finished basement. Many of you know I'm a professional electrician and I've been in the electrical business for over 40 years. But I also love carpentry and woodworking and I've taken on all sorts of projects over the years. Well, I recently found a great resource called Woodworkers Guild of America and I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. Woodworkers Guild of America is your go-to online resource for woodworking instruction, ideas, and information. I love improving my skills as a woodworker, using new tools, and using the tools I have more effectively. I recently learned how to make a plunge cut with my jigsaw and how to select between a roundover or a beading bit on my router. At Woodworkers Guild of America, they teach through instructional videos taught by talented and friendly experts. Their instructors walk you through each technique with step-by-step -step demonstrations providing their expert tips and tricks. So whether you want to improve your bandsaw techniques, learn the best finishing methods, or make new cabinets, Woodworkers Guild of America has the videos to help. Experience the satisfaction and joy of creating something truly one of a kind with your own two hands. The first 1,000 of you that click the link down in the video description will get a full year of premium membership to Woodworkers Guild of America for only $1.49. That's less than a cup of coffee. Okay, let's get back to our generator connection. Next, we'll install our Romex connector into our box. Then we'll strip about 8 inches of insulation off of our cable and then insert that into the connector. We'll tighten our screws now because we won't have any access to them once the inlet box is secured to the wall. 
Now we're ready to feed our cable into the hole. I have some ceiling tiles open in the basement so we shouldn't get hung up. With that done, we'll connect our inlet box to our mounting block. I'm going to use screws long enough to pass through the block, the sheathing, and into the sill plate. This will make for a sturdy connection. Now that our inlet box is connected and secured, it's time to connect our wires to the inlet receptacle. First, we'll strip about a half of an inch of insulation off of our wires. We'll connect our ground wires first. As you can see, the ground is already connected to the inlet receptacle and to the faceplate. So now we'll connect that ground wire and our ground wire to the lug on the connection box itself. Now we'll connect our neutral wire to the terminal marked with a W. It's also the terminal with a silver colored screw. We need to make sure we get this one right. Next, we'll connect our red and black line wires to the inlet receptacle. Unlike the neutral, these can connect to either of the two gold colored screws marked X and Y. Now we'll close up our box and tighten the screw. I'll come back later and caulk all around the exterior of the box. The next thing we need to do is run our cable over to our electrical panel. We'll secure it with staples to the side of our floor joist. Before we open the panel cover, we're going to go outside and cut the main breaker to the house. Now I'll remove the panel cover. With the cover removed, I'm going to check for power. We'll test line to line and each line to neutral and to ground. Next, we'll connect our cable to the panel and tighten the screws to our connector. Then we'll strip the insulation back on our cable. My grounds and neutrals are separated in this panel because my neutral to ground bond is at the main breaker enclosure outside the house. Because of this, we'll want to connect the ground and neutral to the correct ground and neutral bar. We'll connect our bare ground wire to the grounding bar first. Then we'll connect our white neutral wire to the neutral bar on the other side of the panel. The two line wires or hot wires will connect to the 30 amp circuit breaker. We want to strip just enough insulation to clear the lugs. Then we'll tighten our connections down. The red and black wires are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which terminal we connect them to. My interlock kit is designed for the generator breaker in the top left position. Yours may require a different location. In either case, you may need to relocate a couple of circuits in order to make room for the generator breaker. The breaker hinges on these plastic tabs. We'll hook the back of the breaker onto the tabs and then push the breaker onto the bus. If it's lined up and flush with the other breakers, it's connected correctly. The instructions are clear as to how to mount the interlock, but they will vary depending on your specific panel. Now we need to install our interlock kit. I drilled holes off camera, but as you can see, the plate lines up with the main breaker opening and the opening for the first breaker on the left. We'll push our screws through the panel cover and through the holes in the back plate. Then we'll install the front plate and secure the screws to the studs. When we're done, our front plate should easily move left and right. The interlock kit is very important and it's required for this type of generator connection. My kit came with some stickers that will apply right now. This one details the switching procedure both to and from generator backup. The purpose of the interlock is to ensure that the main breaker and the generator breaker cannot be turned on at the same time. It's critical for your safety and for the safety of utility workers as well. As you can see with the generator breaker turned on, we cannot turn on the main breaker. Also with the main turned on, we cannot turn on our generator breaker. We'll now turn on our exterior main breaker, but we'll leave the panel main turned off. Let's connect our generator. We'll connect one end of our power cord to the generator inlet box that we just installed. 
and the other end to the generator. We'll start it up and let it warm up for a few minutes. I find a 30 amp backup works quite well for us. I don't run the range, the clothes dryer, or my shop heater, but everything else is fine as long as we don't run everything at the same time. I like this method of connection because I can select what loads I run depending on our needs. I have a 12 circuit sub panel here with everything I need during a power outage, and that's primarily the only breaker I'll turn on. What I do is turn off all my circuit breakers, including the ones in my sub panel. Then I turn on my generator breaker, turn on my sub panel breaker, then in the sub panel I turn on my well pump, wait a few seconds, then I turn on my boiler. Next, I turn on the rest of the breakers in my sub panel. This way I don't put too much stress on my generator all at once. Now the generator is backing up all the critical loads in my house. So how much did this installation cost? I bought the interlock kit online and it cost $70. I bought the wire at Home Depot and that came in at $66. The generator inlet box I also bought at Home Depot and that came in at $60. The two pole 30 amp breaker, also Home Depot, $20. The mounting block, I actually bought that at Lowe's and that was $20. And we'll add $5 for connectors and screws. So that's a total of $241. Then of course, if you don't have one already, you're going to need a generator and a connection cable. If you're shopping for a generator, you're going to want one with a L1430 receptacle. This is a 120, 240 volt, 30 amp twist lock receptacle. I would also recommend at least 4,500 running watts or larger. My generator is 4,800 running watts and it does work fine for us, but I do stage on my breakers to reduce starting watts and to reduce voltage fluctuations. If I had it to do over, I'd probably buy something a little larger. I'll list a few good backup generators down in the description if you wanna check them out. I also just installed a 6,000 watt automatic battery backup system for the house. It's a really unique and interesting system. I'll be posting that video on August 12th. You may wanna watch this video next where I talk about seven deadly mistakes to avoid when running backup generators. And I'd like to thank Woodworkers Guild of America for sponsoring today's video. I'm John from Backyard, Maine. I'll see you on the next one.